So, a very good evening to one and all. Good evening, children. So, today we are going to discuss children intermediate secondary economics. Intermediate secondary economics, fifth chapter, agricultural sector. And uh, today's our topic is agricultural credit. Credit. Okay, in agricultural sector. So, children, uh, would you think that is there any need for the for a farmer? Is uh, whether the farmer um, is in need of any financial uh, requirement? Yes. The financial requirement of a farmer that way in India, it depends upon the period and purpose. The financial requirement of a farmer in India depends upon the period and purpose. So based on the period and the purpose of finance, it is divided into children three types. That is short period, medium period, and the long term period okay very easy one children so the financial requirement for a short period of time by a farmer it is up to from 15 months or less the time period of a farmer for a short period of uh, credit children it is 15 months or less why the farmer is in need of credit and that too only for 15 months or less this is for cultivation purpose, for the purchase of seeds, for the purchase of fertilizers, for the purchase of fodder. Fodder means food for the cattle. So farmer is in a need of money to purchase seeds before the cultivation for the, for the sowing of seeds. Farmer is in need of money, is in need of credit for a short period of time. How much? 15 months or less than 15 months. Okay, for all cultivation purpose, that is short period of time. Followed by medium term period. This is from 15 months to 5 years. 15 months to 5 years. For what purpose a farmer is taking this one? For the purpose of improvement of land. For which purpose children? To improve the land. Land, land conditions. To buy cattle. Okay, all the cattle that are required for the agricultural purposes and to buy agricultural inputs, implements, whatever required. And for this purpose, children, he, he takes the loan that up to from 15 months to 5 years, up to 5 years of time period, the farmers takes children to improve his land, to buy the cattle and also to purchase the agricultural implements. The last one is long term period. What is this long term period? Here, the time period for this one is more than 5 years. More than 5 years. For what purpose the farmer is taking this one? To develop his land. Develop his land, definitely to provide irrigational facilities, that is the digging of the well that become dried, provide tube well facilities and the other irrigation facilities. To purchase heavy machinery. Heavy machinery like children, harvester. A uh, harvester, it is very costly, children. Like that, we find that children, the number of machineries are there, that like the tractors, all these are very costly in nature. For these purpose, farmers they are in need of credit, they are in need of money, loan. That is short period of time, medium period of time, and long period of time. So I hope this is clear. The agriculture credit of the farmer depends upon the period of time. Okay. So beside this one, what are the other thing? What are the other uh, requirements of a farmers? So the financial requirement of an Indian farmer comes under into two one. What is that one? For the productive purposes. Productive purpose and unproductive purpose and unproductive purpose productive purpose and unproductive purpose what is this productive purpose a farmer is taking the loan that means all those money that he is in need for the production purpose what are that for the purchase of seeds like for example purchase of seeds is number one because seeds are helping for the production 
purpose is. Beside the purchase of seeds, purchase of fertilizers. This is also helpful to improve the production. Then what are the other things? Buy cattle. Purchase of cattle. If the farmer is in need of cattle, buy cattle. Then what else children? Purchase of agricultural implements. What are the implements the farmer is in need? So all these are children are helpful to increase the production. For this purpose, the farmer is in need of loan. That is called as productive purposes. Next, for unproductive purposes. Means this, uh, this is a purpose a farmer takes alone. That is not for production purpose. But that is for his own purpose. That is that for the performing marriages of their children. This is an unproductive one. Performing marriages. Then social customs. What there are number of customs in our Indian uh, families. We find from the uh, cradle to the grave. From the birth to the death. For all those one. For religious functions. The farmer takes the loan for religious functions and for all the other festivals. So all we can call as a farmer takes the loan for all these things. But these are all called as unproductive purposes. These are all called as productive purposes as these loans are helpful for the production purpose. Children, by the help of that, it is um, a helpful for the more production in the uh, agricultural land. Okay. Now, up to now we discuss the sources of this, all this uh, <coughs> farmer's credit. Now, what we have to discuss children, our next topic children, the sources we have to discuss now. What are the sources from where the farmer is going to get all these loans? From where the farmers are getting all these loans? So, the sources are divided into two. That is non-institutional. Non-institutional source and institutional source. Non-institutional source and institutional sources. So, now let us discuss one by one. What do we mean by non-institutional sources? The sources that we can say as money lenders, friends, relatives are also the sources of non-institution, landlords, traders, commission agents. The sources like we can say as money lenders, money lenders, agents, commission agents we say, landlords. Landlords followed by friends, friends, relatives, relatives. These are the sources of, we can say as uh, sources of non-institutional. Now, in the year 1950 to 51 to 52, when the, uh, what you call, data was collected, the main source of uh, what you call farmers uh, agriculture credit, it was found that in that particular year that nearly 93% of the credit is from non-institution only. That means in our country, the more number of people they are taking loans from all these areas, 93%. What is left? 7%. 7% is from institutional like government banks. Like banks, cooperatives, okay, only 7%. So, what it shows children, it shows that, that people, they depended heavily on all these sources of credit. The reason that, that uh, what is the reason? The people are still, they are back of all these sources. The very easy we can say children, the reason is that whenever the person is in a need of money, Easily he can get that money at any time, even in the night time also just he has to knock the door of the money lender or any one of these. They will get the loan very easily, but the terms of conditions are very uh, tough children. That is the interest, the main thing we can say as children, the interest, the defect of this one is, the uh, we can write the defect of this one, high rate of interest. 
high rate of interest but you know children when the problem come no one thinks about how much of the interest they are paying children so the farmers they are ready to pay <coughs> high rate of interest another defect is easily these people get cheated by all these sources followed by children sometime unable to pay the loan many of the farmers they turned as bonded laborers this is the defect of non institutional sources but what is the thing children we can say why it is more because at any time we can get it it suppose if you want to get a loan and if you want to take that loan from the banks in one visit only bank will not give you loan you have to go round and round number of time and then only you will get the loan by that time your emergency is gone away so for this purpose to meet the emergencies most of the people they go to these areas these areas these people and they take the loan so this is the first source of uh, credit agricultural credit in the our country next one institutional sources what are the institutional sources like cooperatives followed by number 1 is cooperatives then commercial banks commercial banks and the third one is regional rural banks third one is regional rural banks now what is the objective of institutional sources why government started these sources for the sake of credit the main objective is you can write here also children the main objective of institutional sources children the number one is to provide the timely that is timely and adequate flow of credit to provide timely and adequate adequate flow of credit adequate flow of credit <coughs> at any time the people should be able to get the credit then what is what is the importance of this one institutional to remove to remove this importance of the burden of money lenders money lenders and others remove this money lenders and others and easily make for what you call the easily make supply of money to the people so this is the objective now one by one we'll discuss about <coughs> cooperatives commercial bank and rrbs so let us first discuss about cooperatives okay institutional sources let us discuss about the cooperatives in the year 1904 these cooperatives were started in our country though they we were under the control of britishers this were started in the country for for what purpose cooperatives were started to relieve means to uh, all these rural people those who are there no to relieve the rural people to relieve the rural people from indebtedness from indebtedness means from the heavy burden of loan that's why these cooperatives were started so these cooperatives works under two that is short term loan and long term loan short term loan and the long term loan okay so what is short term loan <coughs> short term loan so short term loan it is of three types that is um, okay uh, better to write it here short term loans children it is three types that is number 1 primary agricultural cooperative society primary agricultural cooperative uh, society primary agricultural cooperative society it is at village level providing loans to the village people primary agricultural cooperative society then followed by district cooperative uh, uh, district cooperative credit banks dcd dccb district word is coming this is at the district level district cooperative credit bank and then followed by state cooperative banks state cooperative banks this is at the state level remember children cooperatives 
1942 was started. Why it was started? To relieve the rural people from indebtedness. So it is of two terms it is providing. Short term and long term. Short term is primary agricultural credit cooperative society for village level. District cooperative credit banks, district level. State cooperative banks, that is at the uh, state level. Is it clear? So this is only for short period of time. What about the long period of time? So if anyone wants to get the loan from a, for a long period of time, so they can get the loan from P C A R D B S. P C A R D B S. That is primary. This primary uh, cooperative cooperative agriculture and rural and rural development bank rural development bank so it provides agriculture for a long period of time this is about children cooperatives i hope it is clear okay so we are discussing children institutional sources cooperatives after cooperative what is the second one children after the cooperative so after the cooperative children we have the second one is that is commercial banks second one is commercial banks children in first year you learn everything about the commercial bank first year economics you learned about commercial banks okay so commercial bank commercial bank it shows that um, agricultural credit in the year 1950 the agricultural credit children from the commercial bank was very less how much it was less children it was about children 0 0.9 percentage only 1950 to 51 1961 to 62 it increased uh, it uh, reduced more children 0 0.7 what it shows the people are not showing interest towards the commercial banks then what happened in the year 1969 and then 1980 what happened first year we learned that nationalization of banks nationalization of banks children were done means most of the banks were taken under the control of government called as nationalization of banks so with this nationalization of banks what happened number of branches number of branches were open okay in the rural areas so this is the second one that is commercial banks in the year 1950 the agricultural credit was less again it was more or less after that next year then 69 and 80 most of the banks were nationalized means taken under the control of the government and then with the number of branches <coughs> commercial bank bank was established commercial bank started working giving its loan to the people this is the second one what is the last one children we are having under the institutional one regional rural bank this also you learn children in your first year what is regional rural banks we discuss commercial banks are there we discuss cooperatives are there then why regional rural banks were established the reason is there was a lot of gaps this commercial banks and the cooperatives they were um, they were failed to provide loans to the very remote areas people they were not in touch children they're unable to feel a very trouble to move to this commercial banks or move to this cooperatives that is very far from their villages so it's a gap again people they started thinking to take the loan from the non institutional sources to fill this gap children regional rural banks were established in every state in every area then on the 2nd of october 2nd of october 1975 we find that nearly five regional rural banks were established in the country and this regional rural banks were established by the narsimhan committee by the recommendation of the narsimhan committee 
So this is children, regional, rural banks. So I hope it is clear children. What we discussed children in today's class, we discussed children first, what is an agricultural credit. Then we discussed children afterwards about <coughs> productive loans, unproductive loans. And then we discussed the sources of agricultural credit are of two types, non-institutional sources with money lenders, friends, relatives, traders, agents. But it is having number of defects. Then the government started institutional sources and under institution, institutional sources there are three are there, cooperatives, commercial bank and regional rural bank. So, I hope children, today's topic is clear to all of you. So, go through the textbook children. Compulsory, you have to go through the textbook children. Read the lesson, follow the material. Okay. So, I hope everything is clear. So, it's our time to take the leave children. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you children.